So, how to make an affordable ECMO program? See, my disclosure is I am not a, against any company, to be very frank. Uh, neither I am supporting any company. I am not against the technology also. I definitely like the technology, but I am firm believer that K technology should meet the need of the patient. If you have hi-fi technology which patient cannot afford, then probably that is not the best solution we have it. Okay. And I am an Indian and represent a senior in Indian way. Yeah. So what I am objective of my talk is I am going to talk about ECMO demand and need in India, the actual cost of ECMO per se, the ECMO program, our experience, what makes ECMO costly and how to control the cost. If you see the data about the ARDS populations, okay, this is a long back of data somewhere in 2001 or that data. There's a huge population in India and this is an extrapolated data because we don't have an actual, actual data of how many patients uh, of ARDS we have it. But this is an extrapolated data from the US uh, in our population. So almost there are almost around 5,87,000 of patients of ERDS we have every year. And even if you consider 0.1% of ERDS uh, requires an ECMO, we have almost 600 patient needs ECMO every year. And that is only for ARDS. And there are many other causes for ECMO that needs to be done. Okay. So what I mean to say is we have a huge population and we have huge cases which requires ECMO. And if you see a ELSO data, you will see every year there is an increase in around 15,000 cases from almost 500 centers. And probably if we see actual our data, we will definitely require, we have definitely almost around 9,000 cases we can have every year, okay. depending upon our, based on our populations and the disease prevalence here. Okay. And if, even if we can survive 50 percent of them, we can save almost around 4,500 lives per year. So. Now if you talk about the cost issue, the total expenses of the disposables, if you make your own circuit, will not be more than 80,000. And now it has post COVID time it has increased so might become around 1 lakh or so. Okay. But if you, circum if you take a customized packet, that is 1 lakh 40,000 to 2 lakh 50,000, that's the cost purchasing price. If you see the MRP will be not less than 2.5 lakhs, which the patient is paying. Any circuit usually does well for 10 days. Even if your metronic circuit, usually it does well for 10 days. You might require to change the pump or oxygenator. That might be an additional cost of 10,000 to 70,000 for the pump, depending on the pump. And oxygenator, previously it was coming in 50,000. Now, post COVID, again, it has gone up to 70,000. So it can increase up to 70,000. And what is recurring cost? That's an expenses for the blood product and investigations, which largely varies from patient to patient and time to time. But on an average, will not be more than 2,000 to 3,000 per day related to ECMO. Now, what will the cost to the institute? Machine cost 20 to 30 lakhs. Manpower, which most of the centers manage. Uh, a ICU staff or professors as a ECMO staff also, so they don't have to spend separately, but then also that will be additional cost to them. The maintenance cost of the machines, additional cost due to ECMO. So recurring cost of the machine or the, the cost recovery of the machines can be very well done by a large volume rather than uh, keeping a high rate and uh, getting the volumes low, low volumes and high rates. So in a realistic scenario, you can do ECMO in around 1.25 lakhs for installation and even 5,000 per day, that will be the cost to cost if you want to do it.
then why we so much cry about ECMO and why we think ECMO is costly? So what makes the ECMO costly? In Indian Sierra now, seven days cost for an ECMO is roughly around three to four lakhs. Okay. But what makes it costly is, it's not the only they spend on ECMO, but they do spend on ICU. They do spend huge on antibiotics. And many a times you feel, you see that the antibiotic cost surpluses the cost of hospital, doctors, and even the ECMO. If the patients are on high-end antifungals and antibiotics, they almost spend anywhere between 50,000 to 1 lakh per day just on antibiotics and antifungals. The additional interventions in terms of CRRT, you can very well manage on SLED, not necessary of all the patients needs a CRRT, but that an additional cost, and all that makes things makes the things costly. Now, what is our experience? In 2006, uh, we thought of initiating ECMO in India, and uh, Dr. Goel went to US. And from US, when he came, it was a depressive scenario, and we thought that uh, ECMO is not there for India at all. Okay. But still, we persisted, and we thought that you know we have to do something. And the reason why we thought, this is the reasons why we thought that uh, ECMO is not possible in India because meticulous monitoring, ACT hourly, ABG224 hourly, plasma free hemoglobin, antitrobin 3 factors, factor 10A, TAG, etc., etc., and that makes the cost too high. And we thought that ECMO cannot be possible. But I got an opportunity to go to 2010 in Taiwan, and I got an opportunity to be there for a few days. And I found that the populations of Taiwan, uh, the economy of Taiwan in India is more or less similar. And in that case, their ECMO program is since 1994, and they have a team which is include surgeons, chest surgeons, intensivists. They have done more than 1,300 cases in the last 15 years when I've been there. And their ECMO is a national program free of cost to the public. They have one ECMO staff round the clock for three to four ECMO patients. The nursing staff takes care of the patient and the ECMO specialist is there only one on a duty to manage three to four patients. Meticulous monitoring, ACT they do four early, eight times six to eight hourly. ABG twice a day initially and then only once a day and they go more by clinical scenarios. And I found most of them using Medtronic machine and they were on Medtronic circuits. And that is again they make by themselves. And this is the slide I show you. We always say that a Medtronic machine is a, causes more of hemolysis. But this is my data of 2017 almost more than 50% of the cases we have done with the Medtronic and pump failure we found only in 22% of the cases. Oxygenator, also the oxygenator failure was with Meadows around 12%, Sorin around 6%. Codox oxygenator, we in fact we have not used much. Uh, we were helping some centers in the periphery to establish the ECMO program, so we found more of a oxygenator problem with them. Probably that was uh, not related to the oxygenator, but probably that related to the team. And we do ECMO transport with the Medtronic machine. You have seen we have done the last yesterday with the Sorin machine. And this cost me at present around one lakh. I can shift them with the cardio help. The circuit itself used to cost 2.5 lakhs. Initially, probably it must have gone to more than 3.5 lakhs. So I get, I do get luxury, but it's not that if I don't have cardio help, I can't do ECMO. So 
Similarly, AVCO2R, Dipanjan is probably the best person to see, speak on this. Our SSCO2R, if you take the machine and circuit, that costs you 4 lakhs. But if you ask Dipanjan, he uses this oxygenator, pediatric oxygenator, with your H, regular HD machine or CRT machine, and that will be costing you around 70,000. So how do you cost, cut, cut down the cost? Make your circuit, on circuit, assemble it, cut down the investigation protocols and go bore my clinical scenarios. Early initiation of ECMO, that is most, most, most important. If you initiate ECMO early, the number of days the ECMO requirement is less and the survival is also better. We initiate ECMO too late and then it's a prolonged ECMO and the cost escalates. Simple, if you have to give ECMO support for eight days and you have to give support, ECMO support for eight weeks, it makes a hell of a difference. The antibiotic cost does not go high for within for eight days or 10 days, but definitely it goes high very much for eight weeks. So most important is initiation of ECMO. Early initiation of ECMO is most important. Make your center a large volume center. That is more important. Rather than getting the cost recur from two patients, better to get the cost recur from 10 patients. So make your centers a large volume centers and use of antibodies should be very judicious. The question I want you to think is, do all the centers in India have three Tesla MRI? Or should all the patients receive biocompatible stent? Don't we use simple drug eluting or non-drug eluting stent? Do all chronic renal failure goes for CAPD? Still, more than 70% of the patients of our patients are managed on HD hemodialysis. Do we opt for CRT for all patients? Do we go for a ventilator with high ventilators, uh, high ventilators at all the ventilators? Most of our patients get still admitted in general class other than in a suit class. So why don't we categorize ECMO on that basis? What we need to do is we need to change the vision. You can trial by nano also. You don't require Ferrari every time. Look at ECMO as a necessity rather than a luxury. And we should categorize the patient in the different class and different indications. When I say this, when I say when there's a self-force poisoning, the patient is not affording, so you don't offer them ECMO because it's not affording and your circuit cost is 2 lakhs, your initiation is cost is 4 lakhs. You require self-force poisoning only for 4 days or 5 days. Even if you use your metronic circuit which is cost you 1 lakh, you can still do it. So don't, not just because the patient cannot afford a high-end machine, you don't use a lower-end machine which is equally safe. I can understand you can think of uh, using uh, a higher-end machine if it's a long ECMO, but short ECMO you can still think of uh, lower-end machines. <clears throat> Definitely India needs ECMO. Is uh, India really a resource-limited country? I really doubt. If you listen to Arpan, after 88 days also they say finance is not an issue. So it means it is not a generalized statement that India is a resource limited country. Yes, India can afford ECMO, but in Indian ways and Indian prices. And that is what we need to work upon. We are still not able to break this point. The day things get started manufacturing in India, we will be able to afford ECMO. Okay. Because we are still paying in dollars when you are in India, not in rupees. So the day we start paying in rupees, we'll be able to do it. Okay. <clears throat> in 2009, when we started, 9 and 10, very few centers doing ECMO. And that was 15 years, 15 ECMOs per year. Very hardly few centers used to do it. And now we have more than 100 centers which are doing ECMO. So definitely, ECMO numbers has increased. If you ask me, the best place to do ECMO is going to be a, a public hospital where you have to just bear the cost of disposables, that's it. No additional cost required for blood transfusion, maintenance, staff, etc. But you, for that, you require one dedicated man in the public hospital who can make the change like this. 
Egito. So think over, would you like to save few lives by maintaining minimum standards or you like to be idealistic and let the lives to be lost without offering the treatment that you need to think about and answer yourself. So why don't we say make ECMO affordable for India rather than saying can India afford ECMO, that's it.